Around six months ago, we made a couple of upgrade videos for the Ender 3 V2. In the first one, we installed Gyre's firmware, which really unlocked the potential of the machine by giving you a lot more control of the printer itself and giving you a lot more information as far as what the printer was doing and what sort of settings it had. Aside from that, we also followed that up with a BL Touch install. And as far as hardware upgrades, that is the only one we have done so far. Around a month ago, Micro Swiss reached out to me letting me know they had released a new dual-geared Bowden extruder and asked if I was interested in making an install video. And looking around, I saw the Ender 3 V2, which I already had plans for the hot end, which I'll be doing in a future video, but I wasn't sure what I was going to do for the extruder, so it became a perfect candidate. Now the stock plastic extruder on the Ender 3 V2 is definitely nothing special, but it has done a fairly good job for me in printing with basic materials like primarily PLA and a little bit of PETG. That being said, I would absolutely love to print with some abrasives and just kind of throw a wider range of materials at the printer. So in today's video, I'm going to take you step-by-step step through installing the Bowden extruder onto the Ender 3 V2. Even if you don't have the Ender 3 V2 for any of the other Creality machines that have this Bowden extruder or any other non-Creality that has a sort of similar extrusion system, the install is going to be very, very similar. And unlike when we did the direct drive all metal micro Swiss upgrade video, this is going to be a much quicker and much more simpler install. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is open up the kit and just go through all of the different parts that are included. That way you are familiar with all the things you should have for this extruder. In the box, you'll find your reverse polarity cable. This will just change the direction that the extruder feeds, which you'll need for this new extruder. You'll have a box of assorted hardware. Later on, we will kind of go through, I can show you where you can check to make sure you've got all of the different things inside of this bag that you'll be needing for this install. You'll find the extruder lever, the main extruder body, which is made out of aluminum, and then it's got a little bit of Capricorn tubing as well as a fitting to keep it from sliding out. And lastly, the printed extruder knob. I recommend just kind of having everything out in front of you. I like to organize everything before I do an install just so that way I know where all of the different parts are at. And again, for that uh, hardware bag, there is a uh, great picture that explains uh, what everything is it's supposed to be included. So I can link you to this or if you want to pause the video, you can confirm that you have all the different parts that you should have. As far as tools go, there will be a couple of things needed. You will need a sharp X-Acto knife uh, to be able to cut the Bowden tubing. You also want to have a set of Allen wrenches. They do include a one and a half millimeter, but you'll need a two and a two and a half millimeter and a 10 millimeter wrench. So hopefully all things that you already have. So like I said, I'm going to be installing this on the Ender 3 V2. If you're installing it on a different printer, things will look slightly different, but the steps will be nearly identical. So starting off, we need to remove the old extruder. I start by disconnecting the old Bowden tube. You'll just need to undo the little retention clip and then push in the compression fitting, which will then allow you to pull out that tube. After that, we need to actually unscrew the extruder uh, because the only thing we're going to be keeping from our previous extruder is that stepper motor. I start off with the tension arm and then the adjustment screw for the tension. And lastly, the other three screws that are holding that stepper motor in place. Make sure when you get down to the last screw, you have one hand under your stepper motor so that way it doesn't fall out. And you can go ahead and place the motor off to the side and remove the old extruder. Next, unplug the stepper motor and we are going to use a one and a half millimeter Allen wrench to go ahead and remove or loosen the two set screws. Once you get the second one slightly loose, it should just slide right off. I did want to take a moment to just say that if your stepper motor does not have a flat section on its post like pictured here, the only time I've seen this is on some of the Creality extruders. You will need to get one of those stepper motors. It will not be compatible. I can link you to where I've gotten them before, but if you see this little flat section on your stepper motor, you are good to go and you should have that. Next up, grab the main extruder body as well as the three M3 by eight millimeter screws included in the kit. We are going to place the extruder body on top of where the old extruder was. Just make sure you have it fit in the right direction. The Capricorn tubing should be towards where your filament is going to be loading in from. I find it easiest to just set the three screws in place. 
and then feed the stepper motor in from the bottom. Make sure that you have the plug for the stepper motor facing towards where your cable connection is. And we will take a two millimeter Allen wrench to go ahead and tighten those three screws. I start off by just kind of slowly fitting each of them in to make sure that the uh, stepper motor is aligned and then you will need to go ahead and clamp those down into place. Now that we've got that, we will grab the extruder lever along with the shoulder pin. You'll need to take the shoulder pin and feed it through that extruder arm. It really only fits in one direction. It needs to slot in. And then on the fourth, uh, the only hole on the stepper motor that we don't have a screw in, we will go ahead and tighten this in. Of course, make sure that the gear is facing inward towards the center of the stepper motor. Next, take the new motor gear and we are going to drop that onto our extruder and tighten that into place. You wanna make sure that the set screw on the gear is aligned with the flat portion of the stepper motors post what I do is just drop it on top and then tighten it a bit so that way it can't actually come off of the flat portion but not tight enough to where you can't move it the reason why we're doing this is so we can take a piece of filament and I just use a little bit of PLA I cut off and we're going to actually push this through the extruder while raising that gear and closing the tension arm and so the reason why we're doing this is just to make sure that the teeth of the gears are in alignment and biting in with each other. So I just hold everything in place, take the filament and move it back and forth. I can see everything is gripping and it's good. And then while I'm using one hand to hold everything in place, I use the other hand to tighten that set screw and we're good to go. The gear is aligned with the lever. For the next part, we're going to be needing the spring pin, the tension spring, as well as the tension knob. And we'll go ahead and take the spring pin and put the tension spring on that pin. We'll shove it through the main body of the extruder. There is a big slot where it'll fit right through and into the hole of the extruder lever. Next, taking the knob, you'll need to thread that on and the tension will need to be adjusted depending on the material you're using, just like with any extruder, but MicroSwiss recommends having it sort of flush with the screw is a good starting point, and that's what I've used so far, and it's worked great. For the next section, we actually need to cut the Bowden tube where it's going to be going into the extruder at a V. So I went ahead and made a small little picture here to explain this, but the reason why we're cutting the Bowden tube at a V where it's meeting the gears is because we want to get the Bowden tube as close to the gears as we can without it actually touching the gears. And the reason why we want it as close as we can get it is because having it close means you've got a really constrained filament path, which means less chances of filament going where it's not supposed to, less chances of tangling with flexible filament. So that is the reason why we are cutting it at a V shape. And I thought it would be easier to completely take the Bowden tube out so I can put it on a flat surface. The only issue is on the Ender 3 V2, there is a push fitting or a, a retention clip that's hard to reach without taking the whole housing off. So if you have an Ender 3 V2, maybe you can, you can cut the V without taking the whole thing off. But I did go ahead and remove the two screws on the back of this fan housing so I can remove that blue retention clip and, you know, cut this. So... This is a photo from Microsoft's website on about the angle or the shape that you want to cut it at. I just went ahead and eyeballed it and it's worked great for me. You can probably print some kind of a jig that might make it a little bit easier, but really using something like an X-Acto knife worked really, really well. And I just did my best to, again, cut it at a V, which is the shape we want it to be when it goes into the extruder. Once done, I went ahead and reset everything attached a new zip tie, put the two screws back on the back of the fan housing, and then fed the Bowden tube back through the uh, zip ties on the cable braid. After you've got your Bowden tube cut correctly, we'll take the compression nut as well as the brass compression sleeve. You'll slide the compression nut onto the Bowden tubing, followed by that little brass compression sleeve. Next, feed the Bowden tube into the extruder. Don't worry about aligning the Bowden tube yet with the gears. We're gonna go ahead and slide the nut over the threads on the aluminum extruder and just go ahead and hand tighten it. When you hand tighten it, it'll still allow you to move the Bowden tube around. It just won't slide quite so easily, which is exactly what we want to get that V positioned. And then I just push it into the gears and then backed it off 
just a hair to make sure that you know it wasn't in the actual gears and once you've done that grab the 10 millimeter wrench and give it a couple of turns uh, you don't need you want it tight but you don't need to overdo it even when mine was fully tight there was still a couple of threads showing so that's completely fine the main thing here is that the Bowden tube if you tug on it it shouldn't be able to pull out after that I grabbed a little bit of filament and just fed it through to make sure that the gears and everything were still turning correctly before I grabbed the reverse polarity cable and plugged that into the old stepper motor cable and then plugged it into the stepper motor. This just changes the direction that the motor is spinning because this extruder is seated differently. And then the extruder knob is something that I highly recommend putting on. It just makes it easier to go ahead and feed filament in. The last thing we are going to have to do is update our e-steps. MicroSwiss made it really easy, and if you just go on their install page, which I'll have linked in the description, if you click the download e-steps, it will give you a G-code file that you'll need to transfer over to your printer's microSD or SD card. Plug it into your printer and navigate to that file and just print it as you would any file, and it will just instantly update the e-steps on your 3D printer. On the Ender 3 V2 afterwards, I realized that with the gyres firmware, uh, you can actually go and just quickly adjust your e-steps from the printer itself and there's a lot of other ways that you can actually adjust your e-steps but if you don't know how to do those things or don't want to do those things the downloading the g-code file from microsoft and just clicking print on it is probably the easiest thing I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you were following along also installing the same extruder hopefully you are now up and running if you do have any questions at all be sure to let me know in the comments down below and i will do my absolute best to answer if i don't have the answer i have no problem reaching out to micro swiss to get those answers for you guys as well so far i've printed out a little bit of petg with this new extruder as well as a little bit of tpu however once i throw on the all metal hot end i'm going to be doing some more abrasive printing so definitely be sure to stay tuned for that on that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll place links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you, allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Dana from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Peace, guys!